January saw Starlet Kotoshoho swamped by the demands of a lofty perch and consequently post a career worst 13 defeats. Down eight rungs for March, he hoped to restore both pride and belief with wins against the lower rankers he'd shone against last summer. If only Sumo were so easy. After crushing defeat, must confidence be gained on the practice dohyo? But Kotoshoho's was out of use for a fortnight due to a virus outbreak at his Saragatake stable. And when in use, that dohyo was shorn of retired Kotoshogiku and retiring Kotoyuki, against whose full blooded grappling and thrusting attacks Kotoshoho can no longer test himself. Under his old, pre pandemic training regime, he'd beaten Akiseyama twice. Here, The long hangover continued, the soft tachiai of January still proving of much concern. His foe simply wasn't moved. Kotoshoho's hopping was also strange, as if he were scared to put any weight at all on his right foot. We soon found out why. Under siege from a strangely forward-moving Aoyama, the right ankle had completely given way. A scan inside the Kokugikan revealed a sprain, and instead of a fight back, Kotoshoho was mooting a first professional pullout. The consequences of that pullout, of course, stretched far beyond this default to Ryuden. Failure to complete fixtures at his low rank would entail automatic demotion to Division 2, just four months after he'd beaten both Sekiwake. Psychologically, it was a hammer blow. One year on from taking the Division 2 crown, and he'd be back where he started. The top division promotion drinks menus at his parents' restaurant would lose meaning. The driver hired to transport him just days before the tournament would lose income. Could he really let all these people down? And then there was the fear of losing yet more fighting rhythm and his feel for the matchday routine. He didn't want to forget what it was like to compete, his father explained. There's so many things you get used to doing on a matchday, and they take time readjusting to. And so, a week later, did Kotoshoho convince himself that his ankle was usable and return to the tournament fold. His first bout back, on day 12, was against the man who'd pivot thrown him in January, salt spreader Terutsuyoshi. <laughs> and by shifting the entire burden to his left leg, Kotoshoho won. But it was already too late to save top division status. Pride alone thus took him into day 13, and this match with Saitama Sakai senior Hideno Umi. Hamstrung by a dearth of right-side options, the youngster almost waited to be thrown. A matchday rhythm he may have regained, but on this body, no fighting template. Day 14 saw him take on Chiyoshoma. and get caught where he didn't want to be, right foot forward and pressured, and thus promptly withdrawn. 
Still, his popular support held firmer than his ankle, and we hoped he could respond with a final day flourish against Division 2 man and fellow ankle victim Tokushoryu. Sadly, though, it was not to be, as the veteran rounded off his campaign with a fifth straight win, simply pulling his one-legged foe across his blubbery body. Imagine what I can do when I'm fully fit, is the feeling we hope Kotoshoho gained from all this. I have since been told, and I think he showed, that his ankle had been shaky even before the tournament. That being the case, we should write this one off and wish him a speedy revival for me.